Hello makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today I'm going to give you my official review of the JJ Aurora A5. So a couple of months ago Banggood reached out to me and asked me if I'd be willing to review the JJ Aurora A5 and seeing as the it, it looked like a really solid printer, uh, Angus had does, just done a review and praised it quite a lot. I was very keen on trying it out. Now specs first. The JJ Aurora A5 has a print volume of 305 by 305 by 320 millimeters which makes it a relatively large build volume. It comes most mostly pre-assembled with just two pieces to go together. You have the gantry and the uh, the bed, which are pre-assembled. So all you need are four screws to put those together. The structure is made out of the metal sheet frame, making it extremely solid and quite heavy as a machine. It's probably one of the cleanest Cartesian looking 3D printers on the market. And the main reason for that is apart from the impeccable wiring it has, everything is hidden away. The rails for the heat bed are hidden away in the base and they go in through the sides rather straight down, making it for an extremely clean look and surface. It runs on an MKS Gen L board with a full color touchscreen, comes with assisted auto bed leveling. It also has assisted loading and unloading of filament. It also comes with a run out filament sensor and a power off resume function. The extruder is in a Bowden format setup. It also comes with E3D compatible nozzles. The build surface is a glass bed. However, it is coated with some kind of material which pretty much looks identical to the Ultra Base and also works as the Ultra Base, meaning that when it heats up, uh, things stick to it quite well. And when it cools down, they uh, remove themselves very easily. It uses a USB thumb drive in order to print untethered. And it also runs on a 24 volt power supply. It does not, however, have Wi-Fi, even though that some sites advertise it as Wi-Fi compatible. Uh, in order to have it as Wi-Fi compatible, you will need to buy an external module, which costs about 20 bucks. So it's not really a big deal. It's relatively easy to install but you will need to re-upload the firmware for it. Now I have quite a few prints here and these aren't all the prints that I did. Uh, the truth is that I've ran this machine for about five or six hundred hours because I put it through quite a lot of customer prints and that just gives you an idea of the kind of quality you can expect out of this machine. First off, there's the Vorpal Hexabot here, or as I call him, Jerry. This was fully 3D printed on the JJ Aurora A5 in Polymaker uh, Polyplus PLA. It came out extremely great. I will leave a link to uh, the video where I did a full feature on this awesome robot. And I've recently also done a feature episode on uh, the robot right here. This is the print and place foldable robot uh, by Fab365. I will also leave a link to that video here so you can see this in more detail. So with those out of the way, uh, we can get to the more nitty gritty stuff. And first off, PLA. This thing prints PLA beautifully. I wouldn't expect anything less. And we can start off with this. This is a dice cup. It's a uh, Game of Thrones inspired dice cup. It's printed in uh, filamentum vertigo galaxy at 0.15 millimeter layer height. It turned out incredibly beautiful. The detail is impeccable. The print quality is just stunning. And obviously the filament just pops off incredibly. I, I absolutely love this filament. Next up is a 3D print I did of Fantasy Graph. This prints in one piece without any supports and it tests the uh, capabilities of the printer quite a lot. This was printed in 100 micron layers and it looks absolutely incredible. It's almost flawless. The overhangs printed beautifully, bridges as well. Detail is spot on. And this was printed in filamentum ruby red uh, PLA extra fill. It turned out absolutely great. I'm very, very happy with the results. But then again, it's just PLA. So I, once again, I wouldn't expect anything less other than just an awesome print. So as for other materials, I printed these pie orange cases in PEG for a customer of mine. I printed quite a few copies and then I printed an extra few because I do, um, I will be getting some pie oranges and I will be using them. These were printed in Maker Geek's uh, PEG. It turned out once again beautiful. It adhered to the bed exceptionally well. There was a bit of stringing so I did need to do a bit of cleanup but nothing out of this world. So 
it can definitely print pegging. So then I went ahead and printed some twist face. This is Devin Montes's or Making Things uh, twist face, which prints in two parts. This was printed in Filamentum CP, which is a cold polyester. It requires relatively high temperatures to print. Um, and they printed out beautifully. It was They were both printed in vase mode. Tolerances are perfect because they fit in just right. I, I'm i not sure, this is the first ever twist phase that I've printed, so I don't know how tight the tolerances should be, but they close and open relatively easy. So that was also an absolute success and the colors also look great. Layers printed beautifully, all, but then again, it's vase mode, so it's always going to be looking even better than something printed normally because vase mode is just much easier to print for a printer. I also printed something in flexible. I get a lot of people asking me if every printer I try prints flexible, so I always try to print a flexible. This once again is printed in Fiberlogy Fiberflex 4TD. It's probably one of my favorite flexible materials to print with. Um, relatively easy to print with. The most important thing is to print slowly, especially with about and setup. I tend to print at about 15 millimeters a second. Not only that, I change all speeds to 15 millimeters a second. So whether it's infill, outer perimeter, inner perimeter, first layer, last layer, just so I can keep the flow of the, uh, the filament constant without too much changes. And it always prints beautifully. And as you can see, it's quite flexible and it has this rubbery feel. So I, I really like this filament and it's also a very good filament to test flexibles with because it's quite flexible. It's not as flexible as Ninja Flex. Um, I still have to get me a spool of that, but this is quite flexible. And it prints beautifully. Finally, there is the make test. I always like to do the make test because it gives me a good comparison uh, with the printers. And we can start off with the um, with the Z-axis tower to see any resonance. And this, this is probably one of the most perfect uh, Z-axis uh, towers that I've ever printed. It was printed at 200 microns in Prusa Research uh, Silver PLA. And the reason why I'm gonna start using PLA is twofold. First of all, I have a lot of it. Secondly, any flaws in the print tend to show much more on this printer. It's a beautiful filament, but it's not extremely forgiving. So any flaws in the print, and they tend to show out quite a bit. For the tolerances, all pegs came out brilliantly and uh, it, print quality, once again, it was spot on. So I was very happy with that. The fine detail and retraction test also printed out very well. The tops could have had probably better settings from my end, but up till the very last bit when it's just the, does dots at the top, it printed out flawlessly. So I'm very happy with that as well. The bridging test printed also great. At the very top bridge, slight sagging, but it's to be expected at that certain length. Um, everything else, I'd have to say it actually printed well above average. So that also was a success. As for the overhang test, I printed two. I printed one with the overhangs facing away from the fan and one facing towards the fan because it always gives me a better idea of what the printer is capable of depending on the orientation being the best or the worst. To be completely honest, they didn't fare much differently from each other and it was very surprising to me. As expected, the print with the overhangs towards the fan will always print a little bit better, but it's not by much, which tells me that no matter the orientation, I will still get decent results when it comes to overhangs. For 60 degrees, it prints beautifully. 70 degrees, it starts lacking a bit, but still quite a decent result at 70 degrees. So for this printer, I'd say 60, 65 degrees is probably the maximum you would should print um, without supports. There's also the XY resonance test. Now I've printed about four or five of these. I've, I've, I've mentioned them in the vlogs and this was by far the best one. The difference was that the others were printed in Cura. This was printed in Simplify 3D. Now I am not saying that Simplify 3D is better than Cura. For some reason, with some prints or some materials on the same machine, I either get better results with Cura with on one thing, and in others, I get better results in uh, Simplify 3D. So this turned out absolutely great with Simplify 3D. And so 
if it can print like this in Simplify 3D, I'm sure if I tweak the seconds long enough, I can get it to print like this in Cura. The problem is that I'm still learning Cura. I am so adapt and used to Simplify 3D that Cura kind of confuses me sometimes, but it's just a learning curve. Dimensional accuracies are slightly off. Um, on the 20 by 20 millimeter cube, I was getting deviations between 20.1 and 20.2, so relatively high. Uh, in order to counteract for those, it's a matter of probably tweaking the uh, extruder settings, the filament settings, and also possibly the steps per millimeter. I will get to that in a little bit. Nothing major, uh, 0.2 is like 1% uh, deviation, so nothing major, but I've seen a lot of printers perform better than that. And finally, the Maker Robot. This prints without supports. It printed absolutely great, so I'm very happy. But then again, I knew it was capable of printing this kind of quality because of the previous prints that I had done. Now, as I mentioned, I have done more prints than this. I've done PLA prints that take, took about 70 hours. I had a customer who wanted a 30 by 30, kind of like spaceship, print for a uh, casting job, which I printed on this. It took about 70 hours to print because it had to be in very fine detail at 100 microns. I've also printed the uh, the Nubrac, the spool holders and the spool drawers in order to test out the filament sensor. Um, links in the video description as well. So on and all, I have to say I'm very happy with this printer. However, there are a few things I need to mention. So what do I like about this printer? While it might not make any difference to many of you, I I really like the looks of this printer. It's extremely clean, it fits nicely on a desk, and it is just it's just a good looking printer. Build volume is quite large, so that is a definite plus. Print quality, exceptionally good, especially for the price. At the moment, this printer is on a flash sale um, on, on Gearbest, I think as well. This was sent to me by Banggood. I will li leave links for both. Um, and it's under 300 euros, and that is incredible price for this kind of quality. I really like the fact that it has a power of uh, resume function and the filament sensor, I think at this day and age, those should come standard in each and every single printer, and these work brilliantly. Finally, I also like the fact that it comes almost fully assembled. It just takes about four screws to put it together, and you're up and running. And uh, the ease of use of the touch screen, the interactive menu, uh, the UI, it's it's just it, it works. It's easy to use and it works. So now the cons. Um, these are always there. First of all, it's quite noisy, especially when it does travel moves. Um, I don't know what stepper drivers it uses, but they're relatively noisy, so I had to slow down the speed because it just does this wearing sound whenever it moves from one place to another. You can easily solve that by installing TMC 2100 drivers or TMC 2130s. Um, not an expensive fix, it's about 40 or 50 bucks if I'm not wrong, so not such a big deal. But just so you know, before you do that, this printer will be slightly noisy. One of the main issues I was having in the beginning was under extrusion and after doing some tests I noticed that on a 100 millimeter extrusion test it was only extruding about 94 millimeters and after hooking it up to printer face and sort of adjusting the uh, the steps per millimeter for the extruder I noticed that it does not save to EEPROM so EEPROM saving is not enabled from the get-go and I didn't want to stay reflashing the firmware and doing some edits on it. Um, so instead, what I found myself doing is that at the start code of every, uh, every STL uh, that I uh, sliced, I used to include the command to change the steps per millimeter for the extruder, and that seemed to solve my issue. But as I mentioned, that can be fixed by uh, downloading firmware, which um, uh, JJ or I have uh, put on a public Google Drive, along with all other kinds of documents and files. Uh, you can download it, uh, tune it up yourself, and re-upload it to the printer, and enable the EEPROM while you're at it. Another issue I had was the uh, hot end fan, not the part cooling fan, the hot end fan. After about 450 hours, it started dying. It started making some weird noise. It felt like the bearings and start were starting to rattle. Um, after about two or three prints after that, the fan just completely died. So I had to push it with my finger in order for it to start turning and it makes 
loud noises quite annoying it's a relatively cheap fix um, you can possibly spend a bit more by a quieter fan and like a Noctua fan but just so you keep in mind I didn't want to change it until this review was done one last thing and this is just being a bit picky uh, that is the fan shroud for the part cooling fan it's it's the only 3d printed part that I found on this printer unfortunately the way it is it seems to be a bit close to the nozzle and I don't know if it's 3D printed in PLA to be completely honest, but it started to warp out of shape. And the way to fix that is simply print new one in better material. Personally, I'd probably upgrade the, um, the hot end part cooling fan um, to a blower fan. Um, there are quite a lot of designs that come up on Thingiverse almost every day. Uh, so that's something I'm definitely going to be doing. As for everything else, I think it's a very solid printer. I think it's an extremely good uh, for a beginner that doesn't want to break the bank with money, um, they're on a budget and wants a printer just to print with from the get-go. I'm really liking the fact that while cheap printers are still coming out of China, they're understanding the fact that people are willing to pay a bit more for more solid and reliable printer. As I've said, I've had this printing for customers and that tells me that I can trust this printer with a customer print. And let's face it, for $350, an awesome build volume, quite a few nice features and has the potential to have quite a few add-ons. As I mentioned, if you want Wi-Fi, you simply buy the module. I actually have bought myself one um, from Banggood as well. It was about 20 bucks. Uh, I'll probably do a video on how to install this and re-upload the firmware on the JJ Aurora. So that is it from me, guys. Uh, disclaimer, as always, Banggood sent me this printer for review free of charge no money has exchanged hands every single thought on this review is my own based on the machine that i receive i will leave links in the video description for banggood and also gearbiz because i know that they have flash sale currently going on on this machine if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below make sure to like share subscribe and as always happy making guys